Once upon a time, there was a planet. His name was Eddie, Eddie Earth. He was a very proud planet because he was the only one in his neighborhood where living beings were at home. Far or near, there was no other planet like him. You could say that Eddie was outstanding. Although Eddie had a lot of fun with his residence, it was not always easy for him. Lovelina was beautiful, talented, and intelligent, but also somewhat rebellious. Aunt Madripoora became stricter with age, and Lofalina, though she loved her aunt very much, just could no longer stay with her. She yearned for the paternal love, which she had missed her entire life. It was her greatest wish to meet her father, Dad Pertusa, and she longed to see her hometown of Coralia. One day, Lofalina came home, sad, frustrated, and full of rage. She went straight to talk to her Aunt Madripoora. I want to go to Coralia. I want to know my dad, and I do not want to stay here any more. You have always told me that Coralia is this wonderful place, full of life and colors. And here, it is always cold, always snowing, and it is so very different from up there. So, I want to leave. Lofalina, calm down. These thoughts are not worthy of a respectable girl like you said Aunt Madripoora sharply. Soon after, however, Madripoora became softer and said, I understand what you are saying, though, but please try to stay calm. Relax for a moment and sit down. I have feared the day when I would have to tell you what I'm going to tell you now. This is very important and you have to pay close attention. I can no longer hide the truth from you any longer. My dear girl, you cannot go back to Coralia because, well, Coralia no longer exists. Do you want to know what comes next? Can you imagine what is going to happen to Lofelina? When we read, when we listen to a story, our attention focuses, our imagination flies, our brains absorb information. We are eager for more. Storytelling represents one of the oldest, most social forms of communication. It therefore can offer a unique personal approach to science communication and to establishing a dialogue between scientists and the public. Once upon a time, a scientific fairy tale drowned upon the versality of storytelling to share scientific knowledge through illustrated short stories and poetry. The project was organized in 2016 by a group of international marine researchers seated in Bremen. In 2017, we published our first Was Upon a Time volume with the funding of the competition Slow Your Science, sponsored by the German Science Foundation Wissenschaft in Dialogue or Science in Dialogue, and we won one of the prizes. The volume contains 12 illustrated stories and poems related to various marine science themes, from microplastics to ocean pollution or climate change. In order to reach as many persons as possible, we took advantage from the internationality and multilingualism of our team. The book is translated to English, German, Spanish, Filipino and Chinese. A free PDF can be downloaded from our webpage. You can find the link in the description of this video. To spread our stories, we also perform a public reading events in different languages. No aguanto más, exclamó Burro. Los últimos veranos han sido cortos y lluviosos, pero lo de este ya pasa de castaño oscuro. No hemos salido el sol en todo el verano. 
Si es que se puede decir que ha habido verano. Más bien ha sido un año sin verano. Ya llevo tiempo diciendo que estoy cansado de este frío que se me mete en los huesos y que pienso muy seriamente en emigrar. 1816 es mi último año aquí. Me voy mañana mismo. Te... te... ¿Te irías sin nosotros? Timoteo perro. A, a lo mejor se pasa pronto el frío. Mi tatarabuelo contó a mi tatarabuelo, mi tatarabuelo a mi bisabuelo, mi bisabuelo a mi abuelo, mi abuelo a mi padre, mi padre a mí. Cómo disfrutaba de cachorro, del calor del verano y que había poca nieve en invierno. Igual vuelve a hacer calor pronto o menos frío. ¡Jo! ¡Qué mala pierna no saber cómo va a evolucionar el clima en los próximos años! Sería tan conveniente tener unas pocas predicciones para saber qué esperar y cómo actuar. The project is ongoing. We obtained funding from the Spanish Association Serfa through the Foundation Ramon Areces. We are translating volume 1 to more languages and we are also producing a second volume. Would you like to listen to the beginning of my own story? Die Ziege und der Baum. Die kleine Ziege packt die Sachen. Sie möchte einen Ausflug machen. Bald wandert sie den Berg hinauf, bis sie eine Pause braucht. Ein großer Baum mit grüner Krone, ein alter, ruhiger Waldbewohner, spendet Schatten und lädt ein zu Rast das kleine Zickelein. Die Ziege setzt sich hin ins Laub, die Schuhe aus, den Hut vom Haupt. Sie sagt zu sich selbst, hier ist es bequem, der Baum, der macht es mir schattig und schön. Freut mich, dass es dir hier gut gefällt. Die Ziege schreckt auf, was in aller Welt? Der Baum redet weiter, was stimmt denn nicht? Kennst du keinen Baum, der spricht? Die Ziege sagt, nein, das ist mir neu. Der Baum tut empört, doch schmunzelt dabei. Wir fühlen, wir sprechen, wir denken wie ihr. Wir nützen der Erde, auch dir, liebes Tier. Sauerstoff braucht ihr alle zum Leben. Wir Bäume können ihn euch geben. Und zum Tausch filtern wir aus der Luft ein anderes Gas, CO2, den Schuft. Du weißt schon, Kohlenstoffdioxid, das Klimagas. Sehr unbeliebt. Eigentlich muss man ihm zugestehen, ohne es wird's auch nicht gehen. Denn dann wäre die Erde eiskalt, will Wärme entweichen, sagt CO2 Halt. Die Natur hatte sich gut eingespielt, doch mittlerweile gibt's davon einfach zu viel. If you are as passionate about the oceans and care as much about our planet's health as we do, join us in spreading the word about this unique environment we all live in together. Tell your friends, colleagues, and families about our project. And let's all try to live more sustainably and share our views on the climate crisis. Mm -hmm.